Hi, and welcome to How to Use SurveyMonkey and Other Online Interviewing Sites, Part 1 of 2, Signing Up and Creating the Survey. Our mission at surveyadvisors.org is to help nonprofits and small businesses create great surveys. We're a group of industry professionals volunteering our time and expertise to help you. Although this guide focuses on SurveyMonkey, one of the most popular sites, you'll find this broadly applicable since most sites have similar interfaces and capabilities. As we mentioned in the free survey writing guide on surveyadvisors.org, the vast majority of the research industry has migrated to online surveys. They're a faster and cheaper way to create surveys and collect data, and they usually have a much higher response rate, which can have an enormous impact on the quality of your analysis. Let's start. Signing up for an account is simple. You have a choice between the free and the professional for pay versions. We suggest starting out with the free version. You can always upgrade later and save all your work. Simply enter your username, create and verify a password, and add a contact email. We've clicked off the button that asks if we'd like marketing messages. And that's it. It's a straightforward process. We'll click on Create Account and we're all set. Next, we'll cover the meat of this program and review the key points you'll need to navigate the system and write a great survey. Since most online sites have a similar look and feel, you can apply everything in this video to many other online survey sites. First, we'll give the survey a title. That takes us to the main screen for creating questions. Let's click on the Add Question button to start. The drop-down menu includes all the questions we can use. This is where the site becomes a little more intimidating. There are 15 question types listed. An easy way to learn what each question type looks like is to click on the Examples text. When you click on a question type, you'll see an example to the right. The good news is that there are really only three question types, each with a few minor variations. There are open-ended response questions, like the comment essay box. Here, you simply type in your full response within the box. In the satisfaction surveys, we recommend asking an open-ended, why did you say that question early in the questionnaire, and would use an essay box for that. The single text box is really the same thing, just a little bit shorter. And as the name suggests, multiple text boxes include more than one answer space, and the numeric one requires a number. Remember, we don't recommend including more than two or three open-ended questions in a survey since they fatigue respondents and are quite time-consuming. If you do, odds are you'll find that later questions aren't answered. The second type of question is the multiple choice. These are the bread and butter of research. We use these for the satisfaction question, and pollsters use single responses for the candidate choice question. Multiple responses, like the peanut butter example, are used when the answers aren't mutually exclusive. The third type of question is the matrix of choices, commonly used when we ask satisfaction or performance across a series of factors. Multiple answers per row can be used when the answers aren't mutually exclusive, but most satisfaction surveys use the one per row question. There are also matrix questions using the drop-down menus, but we don't recommend these. Rating scale questions are similar. Descriptive can be helpful. We'll demonstrate an example in a minute. Image simply displays an image. And although demographics are important, we don't recommend using this question in most cases. Why? This is essentially a contact form with personal information, and as we discuss in the guide at the surveyadvisors.org, it's critical to offer your respondents anonymity. Instead, we'll use single response questions as indicated in that guide. Okay, let's create a questionnaire starting with the satisfaction question. We'll select multiple choice, only one answer. In the question text box, we'll type the question. Each answer below is entered in the box, one per line, no need for choice numbers. You are given the option to sort randomized choices. If you have a long list of, say, brands, sorting alphabetically makes it easier to scan. If you have a list of unrelated answer choices, randomizing will help, since people otherwise are more likely to select earlier choices. However, with a set scale like Satisfaction, we'll skip this. You can also ask for a comment box, but we don't recommend these. If you're unsure you've covered all the answer choices, check this when you do your dry run pretest. This is explained in detail in the do-it-yourself guide on surveyadvisors.org. You can choose to require an answer. Many people don't make all questions mandatory because they're concerned respondents won't complete the survey. This is certainly legitimate, but it is also why it's so important to focus your survey on key decisions, which enables you to keep it as short as possible. 
Unless your survey is overly long or isn't relevant to all your respondents, we'd strongly recommend making all your questions mandatory. The last setting is formatting and we'll skip that for now. Press Save Changes and you'll see your question. Let's enter a few more. The next question is a comment essay box. We'll make this mandatory. Next, we'll use the matrix question. These are the kinds of questions where you rate a series of factors. For example, the calendar was easy to understand and communication was timely on a common set of factors such as agree strongly through disagree strongly. First, we'll enter the question text as before. Next, the row choices are now a little different. This is where you enter the factors you're evaluating, each on a separate line. For these type of questions, we do want to randomize responses. We'll then enter the answer scale, in this case, agree strongly through disagree strongly in the box. We'll require an answer and then save changes. And you can see that number three is a resulting question. That covers the major question types you'll use. Once you know how to navigate the software, it's really quite easy. And if you use other sites, you'll find that most are similar. Next, we'll scroll to the top of the page and look at a few options. We'll click on Survey Options in the upper left corner. In general, we recommend against using page or question numbering, so we'll unselect these. We don't recommend the progress bar since we're aiming for a short survey and this wouldn't matter. We'll show the survey title but not page titles. Page titles are really more just internal references and aren't relevant to the survey. We'll scroll down. The navigation buttons look fine so we won't change these and we'll keep the asterisk to highlight required questions. Let's save the changes. We'll go back to editing the survey. Earlier we said the question choice descriptive text was helpful. We'll use this for our brief survey introduction. We'll enter the text in the box as usual and then save our changes. Now that we're done with this example questionnaire, let's preview the survey. I'll click on the preview button in the upper right. The resulting survey has a nice clean look. You can test answering the questions and then if you don't answer one you'll receive an error message. And that covers the main functions you'll need to get up and running to create a great survey. In the next video we'll cover how to create your survey link, collect responses, and analyze data. And remember, more free resources are available on surveyadvisors.org, including a full do-it-yourself questionnaire guide.